Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start the, the meeting tonight, I'd ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. Honesty is the first chapter in the Book of Wisdom. That's the first quote she's ever done. That's five words or six words. Thank right? you. <laughs> <laughs> very You're right. right. But very appropriate. <laughs> call the uh, a sixth regular meeting of the Common Council order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rindfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Surik. Excuse. Vanderweel, Verhasselt, and Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. No, fifteen present. I, didn't I say fifteen? Oh, oh that's right, sixteen. I'm sorry. Okay. Fifteen. <laughs> and now it's time to pledge uh, allegiance to the wonderful and beautiful country we live in. Alderman Gisha, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Before we go to approval of the minutes, I would ask again, uh, people do call my office and ask that I ask you, make sure your mics are attached to your either collar, your tie, None of the waving it around because people can't hear you. Uh, and make sure that you have it on you all the time. It's very important. Approval of the minutes, uh, President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I <clears throat> make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Resignations. Attorney McLean. <clears throat> Uh, there's a letter to the mayor dated June 5, 2008, from <clears throat> Bill Balke, city engineer, advising that he's resigning his position of city engineer for the city of Sheboygan, effective 5 p.m. on July 31. He's recently accepted an offer to serve as director of public works for the village of Bellevue, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Green Bay. Now I'd ask a motion to accept and file. President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion to accept and file the document. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, I'd ask uh, Mr. Bulky, is there any, would you like to say any words at all? Thank you, Mayor, Common Council, residents of Sheboygan. Um, just wanted to thank everyone for the opportunity to serve as city engineer. Every once in a while, you get one of those opportunities of a lifetime where everything comes together. Um, and this was one of those. Uh, I hate to be parting the city of Sheboygan. We have a lot to do here. But it's, uh, I really do appreciate the opportunity to serve. Uh, we're moving up to Bellevue. Uh, we've got a lot of family coming together up there. And uh, it's a growing community. And we're looking to be a part of that. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we thank Bill for the wonderful work that he's done uh, during my three years as mayor. He, uh, he not only became a good, loyal, committed worker, but a, I believe a, a friend also. And uh, I, I hate to see him go, but when he came into my office, I said, I will never try to inter interfere with somebody's personal goals and, and uh, desire for self-improvement. And Bill, wish you and your family the best. Wish you great success, and I know you'll attain it. Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion on that? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation is accepted. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. John Kittleson to be considered for appointment to the Sporting Commission on Fair Housing Practices to fill the unexpired position of Mary Keitel, whose term expires on 4-22-2013. Signed by the Mayor. And that will lie over. If anybody doesn't know who John Kittleson is, Please let me know. I will have a bio. Otherwise, we're going to move it through. And uh, Mark Zafus to be considered for appointment to the Wellness Committee as the representative from the Mead Public Library with the term expiring 430-09. Signed by the mayor. And again, Mark is the finance uh, officer for the library. If anybody would like any more information, please let me know. That lies over. Alderman Barn, Vice President Barn. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, that document I don't think was in our packets. 
uh, Mr. Zyphus. It just came in this afternoon. Oh, it just came in today. We can oh. get copies for you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. First on our list is Jack Wirtz. And Mr. Wirtz, can you give me your home address, please? 47 Winnebago Place. And you will have five minutes, sir. Mayor Perez and members of the council, Sheboygan County Taxpayer Alliance thanks the Common Council for addressing many of the items that were submitted to you on June 18th of 2007. While all 12 of those items were not addressed, the ones that were are having a positive effect on the taxpayers of Sheboygan, and for that you are to be congratulated. We now request that you, the Common Council, continue your positive efforts in addressing our 2008 proposals and thus establish a more efficient government while reducing costs and maintaining satisfactory services to the community. We submit the following items for your consideration and action this year. Number one, restructuring of city government by forming a study committee. Results of that committee to be put on a referendum in the fall 2008 election. We recommend a city administrator. However, we are open to examination of other types. We have included an online survey from citizens on our website, which we urge you to read. Technology. When City Hall is renovated, install electronic voting machines. Laptop computers for the aldermen. And earnestly work with the other government entities for mutual savings. Tax incremental districts, full disclosure of all TIF districts. Taxpayers respect a return on their investments now. The annexation of the Polarware property. Study other uh, possibilities north and south. Extending services of our regional wastewater treatment plant to new annexations. We feel the annexation of the Polarware property would be a first step in attempting to ease the confusion caused by jagged boundaries on both the north and south ends of our city. Number five, have an active committee of the whole. Meet every week, preferably on the opposite Mondays, at City Hall and televised. Because of the important work of the Committee of the Whole, we feel that the regular meetings on TV would be a help informing the public as to the workings of this committee. Number six, adopt an aggressive, ongoing five-year street plan. The interest rate currently charged to homeowners now at 7% should equal the rate that the city is paying at 4%. It seems only fair that the homeowners get a lower rate as they are already paying a fair share of the load. Number seven, closely monitor the ambulance service by means of trial balance and audits. We feel it is extremely important to the taxpayers that a complete and accurate accounting be given to verify profits or losses. Number eight, the city plan department should produce a 10-year plan to start buying lands for future needs and get out of the lending business except for industrial bonds for the creation of jobs. We see this as good practice, business-like, and preparing for the future financial stability. A corporate council. Look into the corporate council versus the city attorney position. Investigate this as to the possibility of it being more cost effective. And finally, number 10, vehicle leasing. What has been done? Was it investigated? Were costs compared? The city borrowed from the $8 million motor vehicle fund. Where and what is the structure of the repayment? 
I thank you on behalf of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance for this opportunity to appear before you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next on the list will be Ryan Zinkel. Ryan, can you give us your home address, please? Sure. 1609 North 17th Street. And you may want to, when you get back there, pull the mic up a little bit closer to you because you're a little bit taller. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. And when you're ready, you will have five minutes. Great. Thanks. Is it okay? There you go. Uh, is that okay? Yep, that's right. better. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as mentioned, my name is Ryan Zinkel. I'm a board member of the Friends of the Senior Activity Center. And uh, for those of you that don't know, the Friends of the Senior Activity Center is a nonprofit organization which promotes the public welfare of the elderly and senior citizens of Sheboygan through general support and development of the Sheboygan Senior Activity Center. I've only been on this board since February. My understanding is that this group was formed in the 90s as a grassroots effort to increase funding for the Senior Activity Center uh, and increase activities. As a board member, we have two primary goals, and one is to raise funds for the Senior Activity Center, and a second is to raise awareness of the Senior Activity Center. And we are planning an event that attempts to accomplish both. During the last several months, we've worked with Alderman Bob Ryan, we've worked with Kim Swisher and the Sheboygan Police Department in creating uh, an event and making this event a reality. I, we, the Friends of the Senior Activity Center, are excited to announce that uh, Rick Derringer will be headlining an event at July 5th at D-Land Park. Uh, what I passed out to you is a press release that we put together recently and it went out and it was in the weekend edition of the Sheboygan Press last week, but just gives more of the details on what the event is. Uh, again, Rick Derringer headlining. There will be seven other bands also performing at, at D-Land Park. Um, there will also be arts and crafts, and there will be the Above and Beyond Museum on hand to, uh, to do face painting and other crafts with children. Uh, it's an all-ages event. It's free, open to the public, and I, I hope to see as many of you, you there as possible. And uh, if you have any questions about it, please let me know. I've got, left my contact information on the bottom of that press release. Um, I, I guess I'd be willing to field any questions now if there are any. We don't know. We don't no. ask any questions. Just I'm not allowed to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a call. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and next we have Milt Storm. And you probably want to. Yes, you do. <laughs> Could we have your home address, please, Milt? Yes, it's uh, 1736 Marvin Court, and it's on the corner of Sauk Trail Road. I live on the good side of the tracks, and Officer Winter lives on the other side. <laughs> and you will have five minutes, sir. Recently, I uh, discovered through my uh, letters to the editor book, everybody should have one of these. It is... Uh, given to me by my niece from down in Milwaukee, who is a financial planner. The first letter that I'm going to read, it would be my letter. And because I'm a most uh, motivational speaker, I generally don't consider issues at a regular meeting. I really reserve that for committee meetings. The first letter that I wrote was written January 6th of 2006, and I don't know when the second letter was written, but that is by the husband of a council representative. When I wrote my letter January 6th, I was suffering from anxiety, depression, and a slight case of dementia. This was due to that my wife was being in the nursing home, and I had been just gaveled by the Honorable Mayor at the January 3rd, 06 council meeting. Since blowing off a little steam and a lot of hot air, I seem to have returned back to normal. Now here's my letter. I had to rewrite this because it wasn't very good. Excuses, excuses, and more excuses. 
I certainly am sorry for my critical excuses I made at the city council meeting Tuesday, January 3rd. In my humble manner, I felt it was time for the truth. How many more allegations in this council allegation, is this council going to make against each other and the good citizens of Sheboygan? I'm a pretty good prophet, am I not? For the Sheboygan press to have Alderman Bill Steffen featured on the front page making false accusations about Senator Joe Leibam and his contributions from Walmart is inexcusable. The press ought to be ashamed of trying to manufacture news. Also having Alderman Vicki Myers' picture on the front page and her dictatorial message, I believe she sent to some of the members of the library board, is upsetting and smells. How many older persons have had two master degrees or even have finished their college courses? How many have even had a minor scrape with the law? Why make a spectacle of some of the good citizens in the Sheboygan press? And then I wrote something about the salaries of the, of the city employees. What about Kim Switzer's salary, newly hired tourism director, that could be uh, at least reducing our taxpayers by a couple thousand dollars. Will the Sheboygan County taxpayers receive 30% of the new tourism pay as stated by Citizen Lee Montemayor Jr. in a letter to the editor accusing me of false knowledge? I feel I have every right to protect my good name. As I told Congressman Sensenbrenner at a few years ago, change will only occur if some of your accusers change their attitudes and their way of thinking. Let's keep Sheboygan and Sheboygan County a good place to raise a family. And then the second letter, I did give a couple of copies to some of the older persons, although I can get more. And this is facts, not rumors, be the reason to conduct investigation. And this is in regard to Joe Jacheco and the votes for a job. After reading the background of the district attorney's investigation in the so-called vote for job in Sheboygan County government, it seems this probe was motivated to discredit, discredit Mayor Juan Perez, Alderman Jim Graff, and Alderperson Rene Shusha. Since when do investigations start with rumors? This has the same smell as when form, former Alderman Daniel Berg overheard someone tell somebody something. That rumor threat on rumored hearsay was proved to be nothing more than an imagination running wild. Well, I have a Sheboygan Press editorial where Citizen Lee Montemayor swore. He says, God Almighty, the mayor wouldn't do something like that, would he? That investigation cost city taxpayers thousands of dollars, according to Sheboygan Police Chief David Kirk. I find both investigations similar in the decision to use taxpayers' money on issues caused by rumors. I believe the speculation that several city officials would be involved in a part-time job payoff doesn't make much sense. It didn't benefit anyone in the rumored accusations until after the vote, and then and only then was there a job anyone could apply for if they had the qualification. I would have applied, but I was overqualified. The rumor initiated by Henry Capitello, quote, said that Susan Hundley said, Rene Shusha said that, unquote, is the imagination of one or all of the parties involved in spreading this rumor. I cannot believe an investigation was even considered on such trivial information. Excuse Here's me, Joe. Uh, your five minutes are up. Would you like your additional one minute? Yes, I'll be. Go ahead. Uh, here's the kicker. It sounds like Chief Kirk, District Attorney Joe Jacheco, and others involved in this fiasco were prime time duped. The involvement of two judges, Fond du Lac police personnel, and state officials dragged into this web is extremely embarrassing to our community and state. The rumor that should never have gotten past the initial smell test when first submitted by wistful minds wanting someone to be proven guilty of something, Lee Montemayor. This, I don't think, will pass the test. It certainly has a rancid odor. Does anyone think... Oh, I want to thank you for listening and uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And as for Alderman Ryan, professional representatives... I think that's for some a little stretch. Thank you. Last on the list would be Henry Capitillo. (coughs) 
Henry, can I have your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, I really didn't plan to come and speak today. I didn't even prepare anything, but um, I thought, well, you know what? Things happen so fast in this council that you blink and all of a sudden it goes, it goes through. And when I read the article in the Sheboygan Press about the joint dispatch and how that was pretty much DOA dead on arrival, that the council was considering not considering that, um, I felt that, you know what, you read everything in the Sheboygan Press, some of the things that they say, and the last, article, the last time I was here, I spoke on how there was cooperation between the city and how they were going to be involved in the, uh, the uh, program with the uh, IT department and how the, uh, the county felt that they, this was an afterthought and that they weren't involved. And then uh, after that, there was a lot of uh, discussion of how they were going to do joint, jointly and work more together. And in fact, I even read in the paper later on that they're going to be doing things and looking at becoming more green and doing things with the county uh, task force on that. And, and in the article, it said basically that uh, there were two aldermen that really were, were fighting to keep that and that they should really look at it and seriously look at taking a second look at that. And that was Alderman Bourne and Alderman Verhassel. And I'd like to commend them for really trying to do the best for the taxpayer. I think any time that you can look at sharing services with the county, you're going to save money for the taxpayer. And the, the other person, or the other alderman that was uh, quoted in the paper uh, was Alderman Hanna. And one of the things that uh, he said was that in order for them to look at it, at it that it was going to possibly cost a million dollars more for the budget than what uh, that would be needed. And when you look at the decisions that you make, you should really look at the ramifications, not only at the present time that you're looking at it, but also further down the line. I can remember coming to this council and speaking on the budget for the police station and how it first was $17 million. Then from $17 million, it, it went down to $15 million. Then it was $14 million. Um, I remember talking to a couple of the older persons here uh, because I was, I was concerned about uh, the size of the police station and was it even going to be adequate. Uh, I was told by several older persons that, well, you know what, there's, there's kind of a concession now that the mayor was going to be supporting a $12 million budget for the police department, for the police station, and that it was going to be voted on. Well, I came to that meeting here, and sure enough what happened is from $12 million, it went down to, I think, approving something like eight or nine million dollars for the police station. So now what happens is you look at what happens when you make the decisions like that. And now you're looking at if one issue of a joint service with the county is going to impact it by a million dollars, wouldn't it have been better to make that decision at that time to, to provide enough resources and enough money to be able to uh, have an adequate building. From what it looks like right now is apparently before you even put a, take one step in the door, the building is already obsolete. I mean, you're looking at that you cannot expand, you, you will not be able to do that, and is it going to cost you more money in the long run? If you look at how much the cost savings would be that if you would have approved a higher budget and maybe later on you wouldn't have had to look at increases of, of this magnitude. If you're looking at a million dollars just to add the, uh, the, the uh, joint dispatch, what does that tell you about the, uh, the police station and what the capabilities are going to be in the future? And I think that in the, in the long run, those are some of the things that, that you have to look at because what happens is, yes, it is going to cost you more money up front, but are you really saving money down the line 
in issues like this. What other service that you're going to be looking at that within the budget constraints that are coming up, within shared revenue diminishing, uh, the state is looking at uh, making more cuts. And then if you're looking at what other services that you're going to want to consolidate. Me, that would you like your additional minute? I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead. That now you're going to have to spend more money in the long run. And I think that seriously any service that you can consolidate and that you can do jointly with the county is just going to save the taxpayers money. These are some of the things that I think that you look at, and when you look at the decisions that you, that you make, look at what the ramifications are going to be down the line. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. That's it. I'd like to thank the citizens who addressed the council tonight. As always, we appreciate the uh, citizens coming forward and addressing our common council. Next item on the agenda is the mayor's comments. And I wanted to briefly talk to you about three things. The flooded city areas that we've experienced in the last few days. Talk a little bit about the pothole hotline that uh, we will be setting up. And talk a little bit about the Clean City Initiative uh, code enforcer that you will be acting on and hopefully uh, pass tonight uh, item number 6-70. Our rain gauges uh, tell us that approximately 11 inches of rain fell in Sheboygan over the, line, over the, over the last nine days that we had the rain. Keep in mind that, that we know that the average rainfall in June is about 3.5 inches. So we actually had Mother Nature dump about three times as much as she's done ever. Uh, now we had a, a good beating with the snow, caused us to go over budget, and now we're gonna, we had a good beating with the rain, and quite frankly, none of us can predict if, if that's the end of it or not. What we can do is prepare ourselves in the event that it does happen again. Um, some of the things that, uh, that, that happened is we had quick rain flooded intersections and in low areas. Sheboygan has a lot of low areas. Keep in mind, we have a river and a lake. Everything wants to flow down to the lake and to the river. So we will experience that uh, whenever we have that much rainfall in, in such little time. Um, Long-term rain saturation of soil and foundation, that we're still dealing with. Uh, that there's a lot of that. We had about 40 to 50 flooding calls over the, the last two days of the rain, uh, which are a lot of calls. We had about 25 locations that had uh, sanitary sewer backup. We had to deal with that. Uh, four county radio towers were struck by lightning. How that happened, I don't know. They say lightning only strikes once or something, but in this case, it's not the same tower, but four different towers, and just decided to pick four towers from the county and knock them and render them ineffective for about 12 hours. Uh, so that caused some, some problems with communications, and only the handheld radios were actually working, and sometimes with difficulty at that. We also had problems with lighting, uh, sump pumps, water in basements, water in crawl spaces. We had roof leaks that were caused by alarm activations. We had water in the front of the yards and in the back of the yard. So there was a lot of things happening because of the rain. Overall, while it may be difficult for a lot of people to believe, our system worked the way it's designed to work. It's just that a lot of water fell pretty quick over our city and our system uh, wasn't able to handle it and drain it properly, but it was working. As soon as the water stopped, the system started working pretty good. I do want to thank the Public Works Department uh, for their, for their uh, quick work, the uh, Fire Department, the Police Department, and the County, uh, the, the Director of Emergency Management, which is Steve Steinhardt. Uh, these three entities, I mean three departments, and the County uh, manage, uh, Emergency Management uh, uh, Director work together as a team, address all these issues that I just talked about and perhaps even more, and we're able to deal with it very, very effectively to the satisfaction of a lot of people. Not everyone was satisfied with the way we handled it, but I want to assure the council and the public that we were not not ignoring the situation. Every department head that's, that has a responsibility to deal with this was on it, uh, including myself. Our overall, entire, uh, overall our entire Stormwater system did its job, like I said. In the last 10 years, the city has invested about $20 million in stormwater infrastructure and sanitary sewer improvements. If you go back another 10, about another 20. So overall, in the last 20 years, it's been about $40 million. 
folks, that's a lot of money, and we're still going to need to invest more. In the past, heavy rainfall like we've had would have caused more widespread damage because our system worked the way it was supposed to and handled the water the way it should, although it was slow in some, and at some times, we would have probably had a lot more damage, a lot more calls, a lot more concerns from the public. So overall, it worked. Also keep in mind that about nine states in the entire Midwest, in Iowa, I think at times uh, it was reported that 90% of Iowa at one time or another was underwater, and probably half of it still is. Uh, we did not pair off so bad. Our, our city was, was pretty good off. Uh, I know that Appleton and Oscotch had some serious problems out there, continue to have some serious problems. We are doing pretty good as we stand now. Some of our short-term responses uh, that we did was barricade flooding streets. Obviously, the first thing you have to do is barricade some of the flooding streets, but you would be amazed at how people, knowing that the storms were coming and there's a lot of rain falling and a lot of rain accumulating in certain low areas, people were still driving around. And I would caution people that when we have this type of situation and you see any amount of water in the street, don't drive through it because you don't know how deep it is. So we had, as a consequence, cars being stalled, water being gushed out into uh, uh, residence uh, windows and so forth. So the best thing to do when we have a situation like this is for people to, to stay home. We also, uh, short-term responses, we, there was a lot of pumping of basements and backyards. The police, I mean, the fire department and public works department went out to private residences and we helped them out. It was just too much water. They, we also did a lot of opening of the, of the catch basins. There was, uh, I believe, four crews in the public works department alone uh, working on that. Uh, we helped with the sewer um, backups, and we tried to prevent other sewer backups as we were doing that, and we also helped people who had flooded basements and furniture and carpet destroyed. We asked them to take it out of the curb, and the city picked it up. Uh, normally we don't do that, but we thought it was it was the right thing to do, the proper thing to do for the citizens of Sheboygan. Our long-term responses is uh, we need to identify the, the flood areas, and most of those have been identified, but we're still keeping an eye on that. I've got public works working on that. Uh, we need to uh, identify who the affected homeowners are in those areas where it will flood. We need to analyze what the infrastructure is like at those areas there. We need to know what is there now. And then we need to know what needs to be done, if anything, in that particular area. And then, of course, folks, we're going to have to determine what the cost is going to be if we're going to do anything about that. And after we do all that, I believe we need to do uh, prioritization. We, we can only have so much money budgeted and capitalized for uh, improvements. So we would need to come back and say, we've got 10 areas. We can only do five this time around or in the next five years. Uh, what I'm also looking, I'm looking at is I know that we have a risk management committee, but some citizens were, were talking about why doesn't the city have a, a damage assessment committee, which is basically what risk management does, but they really don't go out and, and look physically at the properties. While the risk manager, risk management person does that, there is no really group of people that can do that. I thought it was a good idea at first, and I will continue to mull that idea around to see if we want to go uh, anywhere with that. Also, one of the things that uh, we ran up against is the 5th and New York uh, intersection. As you know, that thing floods. It, it's a funnel. Whenever it rains, water just pours, partly uh, in big part because of the county parking lot. There, it's got blacktop, so the water has nowhere to go except down to that uh, a, a drain there. People did call. The city has been promising for 20-something years that they're going to fix it. Why haven't you done anything about it? We have promised, at least from my standpoint as mayor, we have promised and we are working on it now. It's a problem that I inherited. It's a problem that all of you inherited. This problem has been long going for a long time. Uh, what we're looking at there is uh, the, uh, putting a 54 inch diameter uh, storm sewer because right now it's not big enough. And in some areas as you go work your way up the hill to go down to the river, we're probably going to have to be digging about 30, 35 feet. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a lot of work. And because of that major construction, we're also going to have to tear the, the street and rebuild it in concrete. So it, it, there's a lot of that being planned right now. Um, one of the things that the, uh, the, uh, uh, Bill, uh, the city engineer, Bill Walkie, told me is that the, he expects before he leaves on July 31st that he will complete the plans and bid the design before leaving. So we should be pretty well set uh, on 5th in New York. And that will take 
a big burden off the council in, in terms of being responsive to the citizens, and it will address an area that has needed it for a very long time. Other long-term responses that I'd like to consider and work with the council with is uh, we will be working with the, with the cable uh, station. This time we had some, uh, some, some problems with the communication. We plan to reach out to them again and work with them. Uh, the website, our city website, and, and the radio for public announcements. Obviously, we work with the Sheboygan Press all the time, but they usually have the story after all this happens. So we, we will work with them however we can. One of the things that I hope to do, and I've talked to Tujer Lee, the I, IT director, and uh, Chief Lastusky, Fire Chief Lastusky, is to give access to uh, two people in the police department and two people in the fire department to be able to change, and uh, not change, to be able to, to put um, notices on our website immediately. Uh, now they, the IT department has to do it. Well, this thing happens at midnight. We have to have the ability in the police department and the fire department for two people to go in there and put notices to the public so that they're able to go on our website and keep in touch as to what, what's being done or what they can expect. Uh, that will be a big improvement in terms of our uh, emergency management and uh, communication with the, with the public. Also, what I'd like to consider is invest more money towards uh, stormwater infrastructure, street repair and reconstruction, and many stormwater sewers. Uh, as we went out, we saw a lot of the backyards need to be drained. Also, we saw that a lot of these backyards have been graded the wrong way. They're graded towards the basement, not away from the basement. And some of them have a very low spot, and that is a private thing that they need to, to work on. But what we can do from our standpoint is uh, help uh, install the mini stormwater sewers, which will dr help drain those back areas. The other thing that I would like to do is a request that the council approve uh, this document, 677, 6-77, that you'll be dealing with tonight. We will be referred to finance committee, it's a request for me to, uh, to uh, uh, increase our capital improvements borrowing from $3 million to $5 million and to earmark the additional $2 million for the next five years so that we can invest $10 million into our infrastructure. Uh, I noticed uh, Alderman Gish is smiling. He's already said thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, for the longest time, the city of Sheboygan was borrowing $5 million for capital improvements already. At some point, the council decided to cut down to $3 million. Now I think the times and the concerns that we have uh, dictate that we go back and consider borrowing $5 million for five years so we can capitalize $10 million to put into our infrastructure uh, uh, improvements in street and reconstruction. And that document, as I said, 677 will go to finance. Also, there was some, uh, some concern about numbers to call uh, for the public that's watching. The, the city does mail out the, the calendars for the uh, recyclables and, and collection of, ref of garbage. And, and, and on the back, there's all the numbers that you need. If they don't have a calendar, they can call the mayor's office. We'll gladly send them a number. But the number for public works is and has been 459-3448. For public works is three four five nine three four four eight, and that's the number that people need to call with any issues that deal with public works. Of course, you, people can also call the police and fire and ambulance by dialing nine one one. It's a quick way to do it, or the uh, dispatchers can refer you back to the three four four eight number. For the emergency, uh, for the county emergency management department, the numbers there are four five nine three one one nine or 4593360. And if those numbers, uh, if somebody needs those numbers, they can also call my office and we'll be gl glad to provide them for you. Uh, important media for people who, who uh, will be uh, going through another storm like we've had before. Uh, important media to keep in mind is look towards the radio, the city website, and cable TV. Those are the three main ones. And of course, the numbers that you need to call. Some people call me at my house. That's OK, too. We'll take the calls. And I'm sure some aldermen got calls, too. I think that's okay, too. They'll take the calls. Now, as a final reminder, to, uh, Wednesday, starting at about 10 a.m., uh, FEMA officials are going to be in the city of Sheboygan, actually in the county, but they will be in the city to assess the rain and flood damage to the county and to the city. Uh, depending on the severity of the damage, there may be some federal money available to people, either in, as an outright grant or as a, a, a um, low-interest loan. And uh, the uh, 
Steve Steinhardt, the director of emergency management for the county, is asking the people to assess whatever damage anyone had, any amount of damage, and report it to him, to Steve Seinhardt. Again, those numbers are 459-3119, 459-3360. The information, the, the damage assessment has to come in before any, before any determination is to be made as to whether we qualify or whether we should pursue any type of federal funds and grants or uh, low interest loans. And then as a final note on that issue, Please stay home during times of tornado warnings, heavy rains, and flooding. Please stay home. There will be uh, police, fire, and public works out there trying to address the situation, and it just makes it a little bit more difficult when, when people don't stay home. Next item that I'd like to just briefly touch on is the pothole hotline. As you know, we had a very severe, nasty, brutal winter. Because we did, our streets took a beating. And there's a lot of potholes out there. I know it. You know it. We're not ignoring it. We just have to follow the, uh, the procedures that the Public Works has to try to deal with the situation. We don't have 20 people that can go out there and, and patch potholes. We do have some people that do it. Sooner or later, we're going to catch up to it. But to make things easier for people is by Monday, we will have and we will announce a pothole hotline where people can actually just pick up the phone, call that 1-800 number, and give us the information, and we should be able to dispatch uh, the, the, uh, the appropriate people to take care of that pothole for you. The city, uh, Clean City Initiative. You have before you today uh, a, a document that will approve the... the um, this, it's, it's, it's 670, I should say. That was uh, the one on that. 670, a document that will pass or not pass the city code enforcer. It's a very important position. It's a seasonal position. It's not a full-time position. It's an hourly position. But that city code enforcer, we're hoping to, if this council approves it tonight, we're hoping to have that individual on board, hired, interviewed, hired by June 14th. That gives people, as of now, about four weeks' notice, clean up, what, what's that? I'm sorry, July, yes. My glasses aren't working. July 14th. As of now, people have about four weeks as, as good, sound notice to start cleaning up yards. At some point, folks, it's going to start to cost people more money to keep garbage in their yard than it is to get rid of it. It's, it's that simple. And again, I, I repeat myself because I really believe it, is that no one should have to look out their windows no one that takes care of their yards and spends money and time should have to look out their windows and see garbage somewhere around their homes. And this code enforcer will, will, uh, will be able to work with that. The city will be joining in, in partnership uh, in a cooperative effort with the, uh, the Lakeshore Apartments Association, uh, of which uh, John Kittleson is president of. Uh, basically, what they'll be involved with is a, uh, there will be from the uh, Lakeshore Apartments Association a PowerPoint presentation by city inspectors to the association on code enforcement uh, of nuisances, abandoned cars, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that, that PowerPoint presentation will provide some, some basic knowledge and, and key points about how we, how we approach the abatement of uh, nuisances. There will also be a two-week windshield survey of yard and dwelling conditions, and one of those uh, yards that needs attention that gets cleaned up will be nominated by one of the, uh, the judges that will come from the Lakeshore Apartments Association for a, for a, a proclamation by, from the city. So we're hoping that people will take pride. To follow that, we will have a two, three minute, two 30 minute segments on TV8 on code enforcement. I'll have one inspector, two association members, and, and myself doing two 30 minute sessions to talk about code enforcement and how it impacts our community. If anyone has any questions regarding anything that I've spoken tonight about, I'd ask that you call my office. I'd be glad to provide answers for you. Thank you very much. Moving on, consent agenda. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Alderperson Meyer asked me to pull forward RC 626. Okay, hold on. Before we move on. Alderman, Alderman Rahassel had once. Yes, Alderman Rahassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, request a pull document 651 and 666 forward for a vote. 651 and 656. Well, I'm sorry, what were the numbers again? 651 and 666. Oh, 666. Please do. Proceed. Um, reason being is uh, 651 just 
for the audience and for all those here, uh, just to refresh where we're at, if you recall back in July of last year, nearly a year ago, this council put forward a document to the county law committee uh, stating our intentions and our interest in combining our shared service, uh, combining our dispatch centers. Um, a lot of you might remember it was a, you probably some might argue that it was somewhat one-sided. I think, I think that by the, by the laughter in the audience, I'd say that would be a well accepted, but um, I guess some of us felt that even though it was maybe somewhat one-sided, it was a, it was a, olive branch put out there to start the discussions going, a catalyst, if you will, just to get things going, expecting there would be a counter to come back to us and say, okay, no, that's way off the market. This is where we want to be. As we're all aware, nothing happened. Uh, so the document served more as an impediment than it did as a catalyst. Um, and it sat there for, like I said, nearly a year. So when it brought up in the recent finance committee meeting, Alderman, Alderman Gisha and Bauk brought forward their concern that it was in conflict. There was some conflict with my document 666, seeing that there was this old document languishing, hanging out there. So as I stated at the meeting, and if you see here in front of you in document 651, I'm asking to clean the slate and start over with our discussions with the county and remove this, not to tie any numbers, any scenario together, but to start fresh and uh, to get the discussion going quickly. We have a committee meeting, a shared service committee meeting with the county next week, Wednesday. Um, and I think that would be a perfect opportunity to start this whole discussion all over again. Okay. Thank you. But do you need, a, you need to make a motion if you're going to pull I, it forward? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to bring this to a vote. To, Pardon me? I'd like to make a motion to bring this to a vote, pull it forward for a vote. No, no. If you're going to go on 651, you need to make a motion to put that resolution upon its passage. Yes, I'd ask that 651 be put upon its passage. Okay. Motion and second to put 651 upon its passage, and that is by Alderman Verhassel, Born, Heidemann, rescinding resolution number 640708 as amended by Alderman Hanna, dated July 16th, 2007, so as to promptly restart negotiations with the County of Sheboygan with the intention of combining our emergency dispatch slash communication centers. There's a motion and a second, and now we have discussion. Alderman, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I would just uh, also suggest uh, to Oliver, Alderman Verhassel that this be uh, referred to the City County Shared Services Committee on, Ju on June 25th, and also, if it passes, to be referred to the uh, County Law Committee. I'd, I'd offer that as an amendment. President Hanna? Uh, just, uh, I think you might want to offer those amendments for 666. 651 is just removed. Instead it. of, well, yeah. still, uh, yeah. the motion is to put the resolution upon its passage. Right. If, if, if it's passed, it doesn't need to be forwarded. It can, it can be put right. on the agenda later on if you'd like that. Steve? Do you what you're trying to do? If. Uh, <coughs> Like to have it referred upon adoption, I think it probably would be appropriate to have a yet further resolve that city clerk forward a copy to whichever committees it is in county. Okay. That's very important. Thank, Thank you. So if we if this passes, then that's the time to make just to make an amendment or, yeah, right, right or just automatically right, right now. Right, right now, if if it passes, I'll I'll uh, no no. Make a motion to amend the I'll resolution. Make a I'll make a motion to amend and send it to the City County Shared Services Committee on June 25th and the County Law Committee. And that should be another further, be it further resolved. Okay. Very thank good. you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yes, thank you. Welcome. Under discussion on the amendment only. Anything? The, okay, there was a motion, a second to amend, and the amendment is that another now, therefore, be it further resolved, will be added to make that referral. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a point of clarification. We're voting to amend to send what? This is 651 is just a resolution to ditch the previous resolution of July of 2007. There's nothing to refer. I think that amendment is probably more appropriate for item 666. No pun intended on that one. <laughs> Frankly, the July of 07 resolution was more 666. But, um, but I think we're not referring. There's nothing to refer. Uh, the I, therefore, be it resolved. 
Alderman Rehassel. Yeah, thank you. I guess just from a matter of housekeeping, it would probably be wise that they understand that this council has rescinded the document that was pre previously put out to them. So just as a matter of housekeeping, keeping communication clear, I think it would be wise to send it on both documents to the June 25th meeting. Which, which both document? Are you talking about 666? 651 and 666. <laughs> you want to refer those back, 666? I believe the motion on the table is to refer 651 to the City County Shared Services Committee. Right. And no, I'm just... No, 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 to the... Uh, right. With, with the amendment to refer it to... Right. Does everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. And there was a motion in the second... Any more discussion on just the amendment? Uh, Alderman Kittleson. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Could you, I, I need to clarify that one more time. We're rescinding resolution 651. What are, can, I need to have, explain again. I'm sorry. What are we doing here? The, it, let me just quickly, it, the, the, the motion is to rescind. What's going to be, uh, what's going to be referred is the, 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 uh, the operative Therefore, be it resolved, it says to promptly restart negotiations. Okay. okay. That's part of it. Uh, Attorney McLean? Yes. I'm just going to indicate the, uh, this resolution, this document 651 was put on for passage. Okay. An amendment's been made to add, a, a, be it further resolved, that would direct the city clerk to forward this to the city county shared services committee and there might have been a mention of okay. one other committee. Right. Uh, so what's before you right now is that amendment to amend this resolution. Okay. Well, Alderman Rinpoche. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And the resolution that we're having, uh, to clarify a further question um, from Alderman Kittleson, is the resolution is to rescind a previous resolution. Right. So... Uh, we're rescinding the one from back in 2007 by passing this one. At the same time, though, forwarding a copy on to the County Shared Services, telling them that we rescinded the previous document that's sitting on their desk as well for 661. I think it'll start just there. 661 will take 666, 651, excuse me, and take 666 later just to avoid confusion. <laughs> I think everybody understand what we're doing. <laughs> on the amendment only, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended? Motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Omigisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I think it's only fair that for those listening tonight and seeing it to actually understand what we're rescinding. Uh, a copy of the old resolution wasn't contained in the packet, and I don't know how many... Alderman uh, and citizens remember what this is. But this goes back to July of 07, in which there was a, uh, a resolution that talked about pretty much what Alderperson Verhaffel's new resolution says. Uh, talk with the county, let's talk about shared gist edge, let's talk about cost savings. And then at that meeting, um, an amendment was added. And all but three aldermen voted for this revised document that you're now looking at rescinding tonight that I support rescinding myself. And let me just briefly, just a small passage of the amendment that caused us, I think, the grief. This is where I think uh, the Sheboygan Press and their editorial on, on Sunday was just dead wrong. Uh, the uh, joint dispatch was dead on July of 2007 discussions because it reads as follows. Now, therefore, be it resolved that such negotiations be entered into as expeditiously as possible with the understanding, here's the amendment, that the intent is that the county pay for the city's building costs and employment to be spread throughout the entire county. So what we said back in July of 07 as a body, all the three individuals, I was in Florida at the time, but uh, that's a good cover, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't have voted for it either. Uh, we said, great, we love the idea of, of joint dispatch. As long as you guys pay for it all, have a nice day. Um, so if the press would like to understand why it died, they need no look no, no, for no further than this document. Uh, I support us bringing it back into shared dispatch. A lot of the figures that have been floating around through public forum having to do with a million dollars for a building, that isn't necessarily the case. There's several interesting options that I think the, 
the joint uh, uh, the joint services committee can discuss, but there was nothing to discuss until we got rid of that amended resolution of July of 2007. So I hope we do vote positively to uh, on this resolution to get rid of the old resolution uh, because it's uh, it it caused concern and the inability for the city to do some some uh, planning and for the county to do some planning, and it put us right where we are today, and that was 12 months of nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ryan Fletcher. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's, it's a wonderful analysis of the discussion that took place, uh, considering he wasn't here in Florida. I think I'd like to remind the, the, all the persons that did vote for that amendment at the time. If you recall, the presentation um, involved, first of all, manpower, uh, and the plan that was in front of us from the shared services involved hiring new supervisors, supervisors that neither the county or the city currently have, but by blending them together, you would have to hire several supervi supervisors of that department. Uh, it didn't make much sense to me, the fact that if we have some people here doing it, some people here doing it, combining them together, we have to increase our manpower costs. That didn't make any sense to me at that point in time. Um, and furthermore, it was, on, on the plan, it wasn't going to be the county pays for some supervisors, the city pays for some supervisors, it would be the city who needs to pay for the supervisors involved. So only half the county taxpayers are paying for those additional positions. Well, what we offered in, to them back was, okay, if, if that's truly the way it needs to go, then the county pays for it because we all city residents are county taxpayers. That way we are going to have a dispatch paid for by every taxpaying citizen in the county, shared equally. Uh, was the intent of that. In addition, um, their plan came forth for the costs. Uh, if you recall, the police station itself, the city taxpayers needed to buy from ourselves, the county taxpayers, the piece of land that the, the police station is being built on in that way. In addition, the county came back to us and then stated, that's great, let's do joint dispatch in your building, but you have to build it now. So once again, we, not only did we have to pay for the land from the county as taxpayers, now they wanted us to pay 100% of the construction in our building um, to, to move forward with, with saving taxpayers money in the long term. Once again, the county is getting the benefits, but they're not paying, willing to pay anything towards that benefit. We also would get benefit as city taxpayers, but uh, we're doing the lion's share of the investing to get that share, share that there. So while, yes, it's been the stumbling block uh, why we have not moved forward in the last 12 months, uh, I think it's a stumbling block that we sent out there to the county to come back and say, hey, okay, we understand your concerns as taxpayers, this is what we'll counteroffer. That never happened. So I am interested in rescinding this, not because I don't think any less of the issue that we need to spread the cost uh, amongst the largest population as possible, because that large population is getting the benefit. Uh, I don't feel any less about that, but obviously we need to go back to the county and do another presentation, another offer. So I would like to support the amendment, we'd like to support, which we already passed, support the rescinding of that previous agreement um, at this point in time so we can move on to 666 and see what else we can initiate with the county to move forward. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also recall the discussion on shared dispatch last year. And uh, if I recall, when we decided to send this to the county in this fashion, um, it wasn't done with an olive branch. It was done more with a, uh, with a stick uh, when we sent it to them and said, OK, you know, we'll agree with shared dispatch. You pay for it. Um, at that point, I think it was basically designed to kill shared dispatch. I don't see how it could have succeeded any other way. Um, I, uh, too, agree that we should rescind this. I don't think we need to recall last year's discussions because obviously they were fruitless. They amounted to nothing. So I think we should rescind this tonight and we should sit down with the county and get into some real discussion starting from a clean slate. Thank you. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Warren? Aye. Boak? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Verhasselt, what would you like to do with 666? 
Uh, Your Honor, I'd request that we put 666 upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, if I may. Please. Uh, again, on this document here, it's a lot in the same vein that we've been talking about. Uh, it's a document that Alderman Bourne and I put together here a few weeks ago. Again, just trying to get this back on the table. We realize there's a time issue here involved. We've got a new station that's two-thirds, three-fourths constructed, so we've got that as a component to consider here. But I, I guess I would plead with the council that even though we are under a time crunch, we're making a decision here today <laughs> that we're going to have to live with potentially for 30 or 40 years we moving did. forward. I think that we just acted on the amendment. Go, go, go. go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, so we're, we're working on we're, you know, we're potentially dealing with a decision that we're going to have to live with for some time. Um, you know, there's so many reasons. We just don't get this many opportunities, these big of opportunities that come by our desk. We're going to have a lot of small opportunities to share things with the county going forward, but we just don't get this many big opportunities. Uh, one of the reasons, cost savings. I took some time this afternoon to call a number of other municipalities around the city, around the state, I'm sorry, that have previously or currently actually are involved in joint dispatch. And if everybody looks on their desk, they'll see a document that looks much like this. And it's some research that was done here a few years ago uh, that points out. Okay, excuse me. Order, order, order. We, we, we need. Excuse it's me. It's an RC. It can't be put upon a passage. Right, and I guess the other point here is this RC came out of finance, and the resolution is being filed. This is not for passage. This is an accept and adopt to be filed. Just so you know and, that. Right. It's uh, the proper. The motion is to accept and adopt the reporting committee. You said put the resolution upon its passage. I don't like to correct aldermen because a lot of aldermen all sometimes say the wrong thing, and I just let it go so it doesn't embarrass anyone. Uh, but the proper motion is to accept and adopt the reporting committee. Are you okay with that? You, you said I make a motion to put the resolution. No, I, I don't wish to accept and adopt the report of the committee myself. Well, it is a, a, a committee report, and that's Correct. the action we take on the report of committee. It's not a resolution. And basically, what you'll be doing, if you accept and adopt the committee, uh, the reporter committee, your uh, that, that document is it, a dead document anyway. File it. That's all it's going to do. You've already uh, rescinded and forwarded it to the uh, city county sheriff's service and some, somewhere else. The document that will keep it alive and keep the discussion going. This six 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 does you no good except file, except and adopt it, which in effect file it. Is that correct, Steve? Uh, yes, I, I think. The uh, could uh, accept move to accept and adopt it, and then if you're against accepting and adopting it, you could vote against that. I mean, but the, the that would be the really the proper motion. Yes, I would defer that motion to someone else, but I personally wouldn't make that motion to accept and adopt that decision from the finance committee. So I defer that motion to someone sure. else on the floor. Sure, Alderman Gisha. Uh, I make a motion we accept and adopt RC666 uh, report committee. Motion and second to accept. Uh, under discussion, we have Vice President Borden on the uh, accept and adopt 666, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this document is also going to the City County Shared Services Committee. So if we file, if we accept and adopt the report of committee to file, that in essence kills that document. If I remember correctly from a ruling that uh, Attorney McLean made earlier this year, when these documents go to multiple committees, it gets a little uh, difficult on what you do from the original committee. I would say at a minimum, uh, at a minimum, we should consider holding it until after the June 25th meeting of the City County Shared Services Committee, because if we file this tonight, it's dead. Is that right, Attorney McLean? Attorney McLean. I'll be with the old one in a minute. If you were to file this proposed resolution 410809, that would that would kill it. But on the other hand, you have acted on 651, which is rescinding the prior resolution and and directing that the copy of that go to the City County Shared Service Committee. So, City County Shared Service Committee would have a document before them or indication from the council that the willing to discuss the issue. 
Hold on, hold on. No, nope, not everybody get to talk in here. We're going to take people as they're on there. I'll, uh, Vice President Bourne, did that answer your question? Do it for now. Okay. I was just going to, if I could Please. just say one more thing. Uh, I would just, uh, Alderman Verhassel, I guess it's his pleasure whether he wants to make that uh, motion to accept and adopt or possibly just hold it uh, so, that the, so that the document doesn't die and it goes on to uh, City County Shared Services on June 25th. It's, it's his document, so I would defer to him on what he wants to do with it. But we should do one of two things, accept and adopt. And if, you're not, if you don't want to accept it and adopt the report of committee, vote no. Or the other option, Alderman Verhassel, would be just to hold it, uh, hold the document until after the Shared Services Committee and see what they do with it. Thank you. Well, there is a motion right now. There is a motion and a second to put the res uh, to uh, accept and adopt the report of committee, and that's what we're talking about, by, uh, Alderman Bow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, we are. There's been a motion and a second to accept and adopt 666, which would effectively kill 4108-09. What the good older person from the third district, I think, needs to do procedurally is resubmit his resolution for our next meeting and put it back into the hopper now that f 651 has notified our friends at the county that we've undone that. Well, all we've done is tell our friends at the county that we've undone some things we did before. We, aren't, we haven't sent them any notification of what we would intend to do in the future. This, this isn't as complicated as it appears, I don't think. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, hold on. Let's go back. This thing lighting up like a Christmas tree again. There's a motion to accept and adopt 666. Okay. The sentiment is that they will kill, they will effectively kill what you just passed and referred. Vice President Barn is correct. If Alderman Gisha would like to withdraw the motion and the second and have that held instead, so it just stays there. You can always come back and accept and adopt a reporter committee anytime later on. Please. Just an inquiry. All we would be holding would be the report from finance saying finance wants to file it. That wouldn't bring this resolution back. That, this resolution needs to come back to the office of the city clerk as a clean new document, doesn't it? No. Attorney uh, McLean. Uh, if you held uh, the report of committee document 666, that uh, is addressing the attached resolution. So. The attached resolution would also be, be part of that. And, and I see what Alderman Boren is saying, that the uh, Joint City County Shared Service Committee is going to be meeting upcoming here. And that it's already is been still referred to them. on their plate to address, and they could address that as well as uh, in, in light of the fact that 651 passed. Would you like to withdraw your motion, Alderman Gisha? No. Otherwise, we're going to take a vote on it. You would not like to withdraw the motion. Okay. On the motion to accept and adopt 666 to the report committee only. Okay. Now, we've got a lot of lights. I'm going to go through it. Don't start talking about anything else. Just on the accept and adopt 666. <laughs> President Hanna, you're next. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to vote no because I think it kills this document. Um, but I need to ask the city attorney a question. Please do. As chairperson of the Shared Services County in city shared services, uh, I already have in my mind, I already have enough information to put this topic on my agenda for the 25th. Yeah, I, th I think you're better off with, with a document. Okay. Next we have Alderman Cleunas. I'm taking them in order here, okay? You're next. I guess I just would speak to the fact that I think there's a time element here and that um, to kill it is going backwards and then we're going to have to bring it back again and there's a time frame that the, if the police station is going to bring in a communication system and there are there are, is a build there's a building being built it's going to be finished sometime in October we don't want it to be half ready uh, this I think can we worked at very feverishly but it can be worked at and I, I think we have to hold it hold it and let it be floating around in the committees that it needs to be considered in so that it it does get due Due consideration and justice. Okay. Next, we have Alderman Renfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I speak as a supporter of additional discussions with the county uh, on shared services and on specifically joint dispatch. Uh, having said that, then uh, to clarify, 666, which is on the floor right now, would indeed, if 
if passed, the report of committee uh, will kill the resolution as written by Alderman Persons for Hassel and Warren. Uh, however, 651, which we've already acted upon and forwarded on to the uh, committee, does say, whereas fair and balanced discussions between our city and county governments could result in a combined communication center that realizes greater efficiencies of service and cost savings amounting to hundreds of thousands of dollars spread over all affected taxpayers. Just that one whereas alone clarifies to me why I'm going to support. Even though I want additional communication, why well, we'll vote uh, to accept and adapt the Board of Committee and file the resolution, 666, uh, because we've already passed, passed 651 already. That language is already out there. That language has already been sent to that committee. Uh, that, that is our intention as this council to discuss fair and balanced discussions for a combined communication center. That's been, we passed that as our will right now. So hopefully that clarifies things a little bit of, of what to do. By voting to accept the report of committee, you're not killing joint dispatch. You're actually for it because we've already passed that, saying that we are. Owen Gisha, next. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, maybe I could clarify a little bit more. I agree 100% with uh, Alderperson Reinflesch. There's also another document in our packet here that you'll see, and that's the fund, fund um, communication equipment in the new dispatch center. Make no mistake, that's what this discussion is about right here uh, regarding this document. We have a short timeline to order, implement, and put in communications equipment in the new police station. That has nothing to do with joint dispatch. We would still need a backup center somewhere. If we kept joint their communication system right where it is now, we're going to need to plug in another $200,000 to $250,000 just to put it up to uh, mandated levels of E911 service. I'm not going to sit here and be responsible for us not having adequate public safety for a couple hundred thousand dollars difference. That's, that's not a fair trade to me. I believe most of the... Uh, feelings about not wanting to file this document, my opinion, is because they want to hold up the funding of equipment we're going to have to buy anyway, even no matter where the dispatch is, putting it into our new police station. We've already spent $100,000 on, um, on battery backup. We've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in wiring. It keeps it, it's within the scope of the budget for that equipment. The equipment purchase was past finance. You now have a document that says, uh, that the construction is close. City-owned emergency dispatch center, hold off here, guys. Let's hold back a little bit. Maybe you might not want to buy this equipment, but I'm telling you that one doesn't have anything to do with the other. New communication equipment in the police station that is budgeted for, set up for, prepaid for, ready to rock and go needs to be ordered so that we are up and running in a safe, efficient manner for the citizens of Sheboygan who expect this service when they dial 911 or call the police station in Sheboygan. If we have a wonderful backup system as far as these forward shared services discussions. And I sit in the shared services committee and I support those discussions. That's a great chip for the city of Sheboygan to use and leverage in these discussions. Right now we don't have a, an adequate backup. We're the county's backup backup, and, uh, and, this, and vice versa. However, if we take down our dispatch center, the county can only do it for like a week. They don't feel safe and the, uh, the communications we receive from public safety officers is that longer than a week and we're out of luck. That's because money needs to be put into these centers. Again, even if we put it in our current center, we're talking about $200,000 $250,000. Ordering this equipment is not going to Walmart. This is highly specialized equipment. And making that handoff, that trade-off, going to the new system, I don't care what it costs. It, it, one life, I don't know if many of you have read the recent reports in Madison, a, a lawsuit was just filed this week on a 911 emergency dispatch situation. Our cost of two to $300,000 putting that dispatch center in there is going to be paled in comparison to the cost of one lawsuit of one loss of life in this city. I'm as cheap as, as they come, but I will substitute dollars for public safety. And, and I think that's what is underlying in these discussions. So I urge you to file this and let the joint, this does not kill it as Alderperson Ryan Flesh has stated. It's still going to shared services committee. I sit in the committee. We're going to talk about it on the 25th. This just separates the two issues. One doesn't have anything to do with the other. Thank you. We have Alderman Rahassel, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. I had uh, been curious how long it was going to take before the public safety, I guess, discussion came up. Because we're, under this proposal that I'm putting out there, we would use 
the city hall as it is currently, as it was yesterday, as it will be tomorrow. We're going to use that for a short period of time until we can find a joint site. We're not talking anything long term. So if we're safe today with the outfit that we have, why wouldn't we be safe in October, November, and December for three additional months or whatever period of time it would take? I, you know, like I said, the public safety card gets played quite a bit. I think we have a very highly paid, highly skilled group of people <coughs> in our police department and I'm sure as well at the sheriff's department that could seamlessly transition us through that short, short period of time. We're making a decision here that we may have to live with for 30 or 40 years. We're going to rush it because of some concerns that were, you know, the public safety concerns. I don't see it because, like I said, we have the equipment there today. It will be there at the same time, you know, come this fall as we're transitioning. You know, a number of communities, again, seven out of nine communities our size do it. And I've talked to a number of them today. It is absolutely no issue with them. It, it, it really is not. Uh, cost savings galore. I mean, maybe galore is a strong word for it, but they're seeing cost savings that do see payback. Not one of them would go back in time and, and revert back to their isolated units. They like the efficiencies and the cost savings that they capture by having everybody under one roof. Uh, an interesting point as well that was brought up that I'm not sure a lot of aldermen were aware of is, and it was brought to my attention by the manager at the communication center in Rock County, is that because they're a joint facility, there are certain incentives and grants that are in place just for those types of operations not like a city-run or a county-run separate unit. The state has incentives in place and grants in place, and they qualified just this last week for a million-dollar grant that they're using towards some radio equipment and so on. Um, again, that's for the greater good of Rock County. Um, again, we're talking three months versus 35 years. I'm just asking the council to give us 45 days. If we get to the end of July and there's absolutely no, no shimmer of light with the county, if they're not coming to the table or giving any indication, that they want to come to the table, I'd be happy at that point at the end of July to say, okay, let's move on the way we were intended. But I'm just asking the, count, the council right here today for 45 days to discuss this with the county, have a few fruitful discussions and see where it goes. Thank you. Alderman Bulk, can sir? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like clarification on given Alderman Reinfleisch's whereas, which I appreciate him pointing out. Does that give President Hanna what you need, sir, to... Uh, uh, to put it on your agenda. Does, is this document required in order for your committee to talk about this topic? And that, that would help me with my vote. Okay. Thank you. President Hanna, a response. Thank you. It's my understanding that with the passage of, of 651, I have uh, adequate information to put this topic on the shared services agenda. Can I follow up here? Yes, please. And then could I get some clarification? I'm, he I'm hearing a couple of different stories with regard to um, even if we went to a shared service facility, however that would shake out, would the city still need its radio room that we are proposing buying for? I heard Alderman Gisha say that we would need that equipment as a backup for that facility anyway. So if we're going to need that anyway, uh, why slow it down? I, but Alderman Verhassel appears to think that we wouldn't need that equipment. So if I could get some clarification, perhaps the, the acting chief or who, whoever's here in the chief's stead tonight. I'm just looking for an answer on that. Thank okay. you. Would you like to address the council, Deputy Chief? Deputy Chief, if not a department head, on any motion to open the floor? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Deputy Chief, take the podium, Just sir. Just a simple at, uh, answer to Alderman Book's question. That would be correct. That we would still we would still need that as an alternate uh, as an alternate site. If you had specific questions and it would and and the council gave permission, I have with me uh, Rush Schreiner that can pretty much give chapter and verse of any of the information that you'd really want or, or need regarding this communication system. And he'd be, he'd be more than willing to, to discuss it with you tonight. I think, did that, did that answer your question, though? It, it satisfies me. If, if we need the credibility of his guests to make everybody else feel good, I'm okay with that, but that satisfies me. Thank you, Your Honor. That's fine. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Okay, we've got uh, Alderman Gisha next. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to clarify a couple things, seeing we're doing a lot of clarifying tonight. Um, uh, public safety is not politics to me, and I have an issue with, uh, with that, uh, melding those two things together. Um, it was brought up, well, what's the difference? They've been sitting down there for 30 years now. They can be sitting down there for another month. Well, the difference is the rest of the department is moving to the north side of Sheboygan. There's no supervisor through the glass to come in and help or other office people to come in and help. You can talk to all the counties you want. I suggest you talk to the police department or sit down at their last management meeting, which I did, Alderman Bourne did, 
We went to that management meeting, which was organizing this, uh, the new police station. We asked the question, is it safe? They said no. So guess where the idea came from of, why don't you just leave it right there? And we'll just remote it for a while until we can figure out what we can do it. That was my idea. And I said, you know what? It's a stupid idea. It's a stupid idea, and it was my idea when I, when I talked to the people who actually do it and asked them if it's safe, and they said, no, it's not going to be safe. And, and I don't know. I would kind of take their word over some alderman's lame brain idea. So if you think it's a good idea to separate it, it was my idea, and it was a dumb one. Thank you. One more. We have Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, there's so many things to discuss when this goes to the City County Shared Service Committee, and one of the one of the things that may be discussed is to leave the backup right where it is now in City Hall. If they decide to build a thousand square foot addition onto the onto the courthouse, that's going to be primary dispatch, and the City County Shared Services Committee could decide as an option to leave the backup right where it is now. And therefore, I think it's premature to be making any decisions on spending almost $600,000 on equipment for the new police department uh, when it may end up, the backup may end up right downstairs where it is now. Uh, so that, that's an item right now. We're putting, the, we're putting the cart before the horse because we haven't had any new discussions with the county as to where it's even possible that we may have to build a thousand square feet on the police station as the primary dispatch center if that's what the city and the county decide should be done or build a thousand square feet on the county the, the backup is going to be somewhere and it could be right downstairs where it is now so it's it's premature to be spending all of this money and as far as what happened in Madison there was an article in the Journal Sentinel yesterday that the dispatcher down there knew the protocol that if a, nine, if a cell phone call was dropped or lost, it was her job to call back that number, and she did not do it. The protocols were, were there. She did not follow directions, and that's why they're getting sued. And I doubt very much with the experienced dispatchers that we have here working for the city, with many of them over 20 years of experience, that there would ever happen in Sheboygan with or without direct supervision. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this has gone in many circles here, but my, my question is we, we have a police station that we're in the process of building right now. My, my question is, and I don't know who can answer this, perhaps Alderman Gisha, um, how much money do we have invested in our dispatch at the new police station to this point with battery backup systems, wiring, uh, equipment that we've already prepaid and have on order. Um, what, is, what is that figure? Do we know what that is? Is that $100,000, $300,000? And that, that is really what will help me make my decision today. If we have almost nothing invested in it that we could possibly put a hold on it, that's one thing. If we already have several hundred thousand dollars into this in infrastructure, and now we're going to stop the cart, so to speak. It doesn't make any sense. So I'd like to know what that number is. How far are we on the present dispatch room? We can't, I can't give you any specific numbers, Alderman Ryan, but, but you're right. It's several hundred thousand dollars. And uh, Alderman Gisha, in response. Thank you. Uh, there was $100,000 invested in batteries alone. There's $50,000 in wiring, not including the fiber optic costs of running all that data cables up to the new police station. And if we want to talk about construction costs, doubling the size of the current dispatch said it would cost $1 million, which means we've already invested $1 million out of the $9 million cost in the room for the dispatch. The building has been ergonomically designed so the dispatch was an integral part of supervision and that the two would be working together. What we would be doing is ripping apart the entire plan for about a million dollars worth of the cost we've already written checks out for. So if you want a roundabout figure, uh, $1.2 million. Alderman Verhassel, this is the third time, and we really, there's a reason for that rule being in place. Two people, otherwise, 
the, what we're talking about is great discussion, but it's logistics and it's committee discussions. It's not common council discussion. <coughs> I mean, we're getting into little bitty details about what if, how much, where, who, to, and all that kind of stuff. That belongs in committee. Now, all is, is correct. When the thought came up that perhaps we could share dispatch or communication centers, I talked to Bill Bulky and said, cost it out for me. And it wasn't that much of an addition. The numbers came around $1 million. I could not support that because, first of all, we didn't have the $1 million additional money, and it was going to throw back a construction date. Now, folks, we've got September. We've got about two and a half months, three months to go, and people, police department is going to move over there. Everyone. Right now, although all of you have, are well intent, well motivated and committed, now is not the time to stop everything and start talking again about uh, shared communication center. Two questions I've always asked, no one has still yet to answer. Basic, fundamental questions that no one can answer. And I've been to several meetings, and I was in all of them for four years, and nobody could answer that. First question is, do you want a shared uh, communication center? Everybody dances around the issue. Second question is, if you do, if you don't, we're done. If you say yes, where? City or county? No one has answered that. Everybody dances around the issue all the time. I make decisions by consulting with department heads. I'm a big supporter of shared services, but I'm also a realist. And I'm also one that likes to include people that are going to be impacted by that. I would not move in this direction without talking to Chief Kirk, Deputy Chief Sherwin, and Russ Schreiner. These are the people that are professional people that know exactly what's going on and where we should go if we need to go any direction at all. My point is it's a little bit late in the game. It's a little bit late in the game to start talking and rejuvenating ancient, what I would call ancient talks about church or, uh, shared communications. This topic is not new. It's been a political slogan and it's been political appeasement. We need to take it beyond a political slogan and we need to take it beyond political appeasement. There has to be shared services, shared cause, has to be a commitment we make to the taxpayer not to political groups and special interest groups. Now is not the time to halt the construction, the completion of that beautiful, needed police department. September, the first or second week of September is when we're scheduled to complete it and move in. It's almost done. To even try it now, it's going to cause a lot of disruption. I would urge you to vote to accept and adopt for 666. We've got a few more, and the people have talked two, two times. You've talked uh, three times. Okay, you two. Oh, okay. I didn't get a chance yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. We just can't keep going. A lot of this is logistics again. And I, I mean, just that, per permit me, Alderman mm -hmm. Hassel. Although Sorry. I know that uh, it's best for a committee to work with a document, it is not entirely necessary. Okay, Alderman, uh, Alderman Hanna says that he, he's got enough information. You can put it back on the agenda. Start talking if you want to. And if it makes sense, and if somebody can pull it through in, in the next few months, hey, more power. But for now, we need to do this. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I think you summed it up in your very first sentence. You talked about the nitty-picky nitty -picky details that everybody's getting caught up in. And that's where I was sitting here the last five or ten minutes thinking the same thing. Is it's, it moves us all to step back for just a minute and kind of distill the information down back to the kind of the basic framework which we should operate under. And with that, I would say, how can we honestly and truthfully sit down with the county next week, Wednesday, having just sent a message, even though, yeah, we have 651 there as a, as a vehicle, be it a small vehicle, um, how can we sit down on the heels of the fact that this council just turned down a document that's asking to come back to the table? How, you know, so let's just distill it down to that. You know, I deal with a lot of large companies, large negotiations, and if you're sending mixed, mixed signals like that, it's not going to be very fruitful. And that's really what we have, I think, how we should approach this is we need to be sending all the right messages. Alderman Gisha mentioned that the document that was put out last July set a horrible tone. This would set a horrible tone as well. I think we just need to support both documents, send them on to the county, and get the discussion going. We need to, there's, everybody here realizes that there is some ill will between the city and the county. A lot of it goes back years and years and years um, for no good reason, maybe some for good reason, but... I think it's this council's obligation today to step up and be the leaders that we were elected to be. Why do we defer to department heads so often? I mean, if that's the case, 
why are the 16 of us elected if we're going to defer to department heads for such major decisions? We need to have them involved. Don't get me wrong. We need to have them involved in right in the middle of the discussion, but we can't defer on such major decisions solely to their opinion. I, I, that's my opinion. Um, I would like to ask Alderman Gisha to withdraw his support or withdraw his motion and support shared services here. Uh, as far as the investment that we have in our current police station, it, I just can't see, as Alderman Bulk was pointing out, if we put this new equipment, six hundred, nearly $600,000 of shiny new equipment we're going to put in their consoles and so on, and then to step back in six months and potentially put that on ice as a backup, I can't justify that to my taxpayers that we're going to invest in this grand setup only to put it on ice. Most municipalities, again, and I refer to the document that I've talked to, all of these, I've talked to the ind individuals leading these groups. They've taken, for an instance, they would take the county, Sheboygan County Councils, or the city or combine them and move them to a backup. They use the old equipment rather than investing new equipment. So as far as investment in our existing police station, I don't think it would be a loss because we could use it as a backup, but we would use our existing older consoles to take care of it. Again, I think we need leadership both from you, Mayor Perez, from the, from the leader of the, the county. We need leadership from this council to step up right now. Now is the time because this is a decision we're going to live with for a long time. Thanks. Thank you. And in response to that, I, I am trying to provide as much leadership and direction as I possibly can. can. I explained to you exactly how I felt. By, fly, by accepting and adopting and, in fact, filing 666, the only message that you're sending is that you're asking the county, we're no longer going to consider you paying for everything, basically. But the message is going to be, when all President Hannah puts a, the item on the agenda, the message is going to be, we don't want you to pay for everything. We're going to look at it differently if we need to and if there's a possibility of ever accomplishing what we hope to accomplish. That's the message. Let's not try to bury or misinterpret what the real message is. As far as ill will, folks, I say to the public and I say to you, Council, there is no ill will between the county and the city. We disagree on some issues. All of us have, are well intent. We want the best, they want the best for the county, we want the best for the city. 32, 34 county supervisors are not ill willed against us. 16 of them represent us, the city, in the county board. There may be one or two who don't like us, but it's not the county. To say the county and the city are at it like cats and dogs is not accurate. And it puts out forth the wrong perception. I know I have no ill will. I can start pointing probably all 16 of you. You have no ill will towards the county. We just care so much about the city, we have to look out for the city's interests in the best way we can. Jealously guard what we have. Aggressively pursue the, the, the protection of our services so that we're able to provide them to the, to the public. That's all we do, folks. That's all we care about. I believe that in my heart. That's how I run the city. And I think that's what we're trying to accomplish tonight. We've got two more lights going on, and then I'd like to take the vote on 666 to accept and adopt. Alderman Ryan, second time, third time. <laughs> Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, as much as I hate to agree with you on issues, I have to agree with you on this one. <laughs> it's okay. Um, you know, we already have a lot of money in, invested in our dispatch center at the police department. The equipment is on order. Uh, the job is half done. And just because we go forward with this and set up the dispatch center does not mean that shared services and dispatch is dead. If this is brand new, shiny equipment, I am sure that this equipment could work as a, in a shared dispatch situation uh, just as well as it can act as the, as the primary setup for the city. Uh, I mean, if we get into shared dispatch, does it necessarily mean that shared dispatch is going to be at the county courthouse with the sheriff's department? Not necessarily. Shared dispatch could be the primary center at the new police station, adding on to our new and shiny equipment that we're going to purchase. Uh, so, I mean, I, I have to support moving forward with this, um, with the caveat that uh, shared services on joint dispatch is not dead. Uh, however, I don't, I don't believe at this point in the, in the construction of the police department uh, we can uh, just uh, put an end to it. Thank you. Thank One you. more and I'm calling the vote. Alderman Rinchleif. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is the second time on this issue. I did speak once on 651 to clarify. So it's my third time, but only on this issue. Um, 
I guess uh, topicality was, a, was an issue here in, the, in our debates recently uh, in the last 10, 15 minutes. A topicality, uh, because the issue at hand is 666. Are we accepting and adopting the report of the committee, which is the question at hand, and filing the resolution that's attached uh, as written by Verhassel and Vorn? Uh, the reason why I will support that is because simply that discussion, we have a document. It's not even an issue on agenda item. We do have a document, 651, that will go to uh, the County Sheriff's Services Committee asking for fair and balanced discussions. Topicality comes in because we talked about costs. We talked about the police station. That's going to be under 669. I hate to say, but we'll probably bring this debate back up again under 669. I believe it's 669. That, that's the, the agenda item uh, coming up yet that actually implements the money being spent on that. Um, so I urge you to, to think about you know, the question at hand is, uh, uh, do we still want to move forward with shared services for me? Yes, I do. And by, I'm showing how much I want to because I'm, I'm actually the author of the uh, amendment that killed things the last 12 months, apparently. Uh, so I still want to pursue shared services, but I'm doing so by you know, what we've already acted on 651, and right now accepting, adopting, reported committee, and following that uh, resolution. Under 669, as it comes up, and we, and we deal with the topic that we've already discussed and already debated uh, regarding the, the cost of that, um, from my standpoint, I can certainly see approaching the county saying, we have the latest and greatest technology now uh, that you'd be more than welcome to share with us. Uh, there will be costs involved in doing so. Uh, what is your offer for that? Um, instead of them having to buy at some point, and we're talking about 35, 40 years, at some point the county will have to buy new technology. We have the newest technology already. It will be a whole lot inex more inexpensive for me as a county taxpayer as well for them to use the city equipment and help pay for the upgrades at that point in time and use the older equipment as backup. So I still see how we can do both under shared services. Uh, so I urge you to go forward. Thank you. Oh, McLaren, I was going to call the vote, but... I call the question. Okay. There, there's, there's no need to, I think. <laughs> Usually calling the question is a motion that we take a vote. We don't need to do that, right? We're going to call the vote. <laughs> Madam City Clerk. Thank you, Your Honor. I was just going to suggest I thought uh, all the person Cleonis is going to do that. That perhaps after this we could bring 669 forward while our minds are still on the, on the subject and get that vote out of the way as well. Okay, Alman Ryan. It has nothing to do with this subject, Mr. Mayor. Um, after we are finished with 669, I would like to call forward 542. Just uh, keep, keep that in mind so I can pick it up. If I may, if you can. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Please call the roll. Hold on. The motion is to accept and adopt 666 by finance recommending filing resolution authorizing the city of Sheboygan to initiate a shared services study with the Sheboygan County government for the purposes of determining the most cost-effective, efficient location for a joint emergency dispatch. The motion is to accept and adopt. A yes vote will accept and adopt. A no will not. Please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Yesha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? No. And Boren? No. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. Uh, just by, bear with me. We, we, we did take uh, 651 as amended. I yes. remember that. Yes. Okay. okay. Now, if somebody wanted to bring forward 669, who does? Alderman Gisha? Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted, and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. And... Uh, 669 by finance recommending authorizing waiving the competitive bidding process and entering into contracts for police facility communication, radio, and telephone equipment. There is a motion and a second. Under discussion. Alderman Thank you Gisha. for clarification on the waiving of competitive bidding process. It's kind of like waiving the rules, and, I, and, uh, and it requires some explanation, and that is that the, uh, the equipment is somewhat proprietary. A lot of the equipment we would be buying through the state buying pool, much like we buy a lot of the other stuff that we get, like we bought the furniture and things like that. Um, the, uh, the equipment has been uh, actually pared down some to begin with, but uh, all uh, efforts were made to use the competitive uh, bidding process and buying process through the state of Wisconsin. Therefore, uh, 
mitigating the need for competitive bids. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'm going to make a motion to approve up uh, to approve spending up to sixty thousand dollars for telephone equipment and to hold the $583,000 for radio equipment until a decision has been made on combined dispatch or until August 1st, 2008. Okay, and that you would like to make a motion to amend? Amend. There's a motion and second to amend. The numbers as read under discussion on the amendment. Please call the roll on the amendment. <coughs> Decker? Aye. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? No. <coughs> Five eyes, ten noes. Motion to amend fails, 669. Motion to accept and adopt being duly made. Please call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. Over Hassel. Uh, under discussion. Yeah, under discussion. A point of clarification. I'm, I've been meaning to ask this for some time. Is evidently we do have a, a requirement to have a bid process, and we're constantly waiting. That, uh, why do we have the bid process if we have a scenario in which that our hands are tied or are limited to a certain supplier? Can somebody explain that to me, Alderman Gish? Are you aware of that? Well, I, I can do that, Alderman Gish. The, the bidding process uh, the, is to keep things fair, okay? But there comes times, just like we do sometimes, suspend the rules to do other things because of time issues. As Alderman Gish stated earlier, there is a time issue at stake here right now. And it's important that the, the council uh, weigh the competitive bidding process because of that. Additionally, a lot of the work uh, in terms of getting and securing the best price for the equipment that we need has already been done administratively by, by several people in the police department and the IS department. So a lot of that work has already been done. If we were not to weigh that and we weren't out and got competitive bids, you'd come back with the same information they already have uh, secured administratively. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could also add that the competitive bidding process isn't exactly being thrown out the window. The state has actually superseded us in that process. The state has already vetted these suppliers, have already, uh, if you were a Ford Motor Company supplier, you'd be called a tier one provider. You've already been squared away and trustworthy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the state has done some of the work for us, which takes expense off the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. Good additional point. Alderman Renfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and be aware that most of what we do spend does go through a competitive process by two minutes resurfacing. Sidewalks, <coughs> fleet purchases, ambulances, most things that the city does do does go through the competitive bidding process. You know, only those occasions, as uh, Alderman Gisha did say, that the state actually uh, uh, does, it on, does the work on our behalf do we need to uh, waive it. Otherwise, um, uh, there is a process that we do follow for the vast majority of the purchases that we do. Thank you. Alderman Rehassel, second time. Can I ask uh, just for future for the future then, if we do have this information that you're stating that whether it's the deputy chiefs or whoever is working on this and has collected this, could I ask that that's submitted then to the council? True, good. Um, just to maintain the transparency around the situation. Um, can I also ask a question is how would, and I, and I guess I'd refer this off to Alderman Gisha being chair of finance and, and uh, being proponent of this resolution is how would this unfold if we spend six hundred thousand dollars on new consoles put them into our new police station in the light of the discussion we've been having for the last quite an hour and a half um, how would this unfold where would the equipment go in the scenario where we had a we did come to terms with the county and worked out a shared dispatch with the equipment stay there where would it go um, yes, thank you I'll answer it the best I can first of all we aren't buying $583,000 worth of equipment just for the new police station. We would have to spend roughly two to $250,000 whether we were building the new police station or not. So, uh, and I don't, I'm not going to profess to usurp the, the negotiations and the, and the good works that the Shared Services Committee should enter into and do this. I think this would be a, a, a wonderful leverage piece as Alderperson Reinflesch suggested 
to have a high quality backup. I've also checked uh, with the uh, with Russ and with the chief and the deputy chief. The the equipment is fairly universal. It could be used with other projects as a backup system. If if a, if lightning strikes and we build a new uh, joint dispatch center across the street, will that communication equipment talk to that communication equipment? Yes, um, that would be the case as well. So. Somewhere in the process of joint dispatch, a quality backup communication center would have to be addressed, and who paid for it? We need one now anyway. We would have a, a fairly high-tech system in the PD now, which would be a wonderful bargaining leverage chip in the negotiation processes with shared service. Thank you. Okay, the motion is to accept and adopt 669. Please call roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. Going back to consent agenda, uh, item 6 6-1 to 627. Vice President Boren? After Alderman Hanna. Okay. I had originally stood up to move forward uh, RC 626 uh, at the request of Alderperson Meyer, and I would still like to pull. What number? 626, was that correct? Yes, sir. And I'd still like that pulled forward before we do the consent 626. agenda. 626. On the consent agenda? Yes. Do you want to do, you want to address six twenty six? Yes, consent? all the person Meyer would like to address. And that. you're pulling it out for a separate voter discussion. Clarification. Clarification. Okay. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to make a motion to amend the resolution. So what? No, you can't. Write oh, she's got to make a motion. This has got to be the pants oh. first. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry, I need to put it upon its passage first. <laughs> Uh, to accept and adopt the report of committee and then make the amendment. So moved. Second. Motion second to accept and adopt. Now you need a motion to amend. Under discussion. Um, no, no, make a motion to amend it as you're going to present. Oh, I, I so move. Okay. Please. Under discussion to, um, to amend it. Right. Under discussion to amend. Um, this resolution is not reflective of the two agreements. It's only reflecting the one. So I would like to change the resolution, some of the wording. Please do. Under a resolution, executing strike A, bicycle rack placement agreements between Sheboygan County, the city of Sheboygan, and third parties. Under the resolved that the appropriate city officials are hereby authorized to execute, strike the bicycle rack placement agreements between Sheboygan County and the city of Sheboygan. Also strike and third parties, change that to between the Sheboygan County, the city of Sheboygan and third parties, inform substantially similar to the agreements attached here to. Oh, no. Gisha, would you repeat that? She's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney McLean has it. <laughs> okay. There's a motion to amend as read. It's been recorded or will be recorded. And there's a second. Discussion on the amendment only. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. This was at my request. Just It's a clarifying amendment. The, the resolution as it came in talked about executing an agreement, but what was attached when it, was, when it came in was two separate agreements, uh, both from the county, both dealing with bike racks, but one is a form that is between the county and the city for bike racks that the city will be on city property, and then there's a separate agreement that is for bike racks that would be placed on private property, and those agreements would be between the county, the city, and the third party, private entity. So this amendment clarifies that you'd be passing, approving both of those forms of agreement. Okay. 
On the amendment only. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Pass is amended. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to make a motion to um, accept and adopt the resolution. I'll put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Second. Okay. 626. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wongaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. All right. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, motion to pull forward uh, resolution um, number 5-42, resolution 40-08-09. 5-42 is on page 12, the last page, and that is resolution number 40-08-09 by Alderman, mm -hmm. Alderman Gisha, Hannah, Kittleson, Rinfleisch, and Ryan, granting J.L. French Corporation an extension of time in which to break ground for manufacturing and or warehouse facilities on certain land in the Sheboygan Business Center. Uh, Mr. T Tim Keller has been patiently sitting here waiting for us to act on this. Um, and we're about to take, take care of it. So, uh, Alderman Ryan, would you like to make a motion? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 542 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clionis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> Vanderweel. <laughs> Verhasselt. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. Fifteen Aye. ayes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Consent agenda. Six. 27, 6 1 through 6 27, uh, Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to make a motion to hold document number 6 3. Uh, this is also, this uh, document went to uh, the Planning Commission last week, and it also was referred to the Committee of the Whole. And after attending the City Plan Committee, uh, they uh, voted to file this document. However, I believe Paulette Enders and Mr. Sokolowski are going to be researching this issue further on should Sheboygan be doing anything about possibly doing any raising fees for big box stores that that uh, would leave Sheboygan. And it, uh, I'd have it, I had it referred to uh, the uh, 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 Committee of the Whole also and I was going to ask, I haven't had a chance to talk to Alderman Bauck about this, but at that meeting, possibly if Paulette Enders and Mr. Sokolowski have done their research and could any, add anything to the discussion at the Committee of the Whole, I would like this document held until then because if we file it tonight, again, we run into that situation where it's a dead document. So I'd like to hold it until it goes to the Committee of the Whole. Did, did, there was a motion you made then? Yes. And there was a second. To hold 6-3. Any dis further discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 6-3 hell. Now we will deal 6-1, 6, -1, 6 with, with the exception of those items we dealt. President Hanna. Well, it's down to a very short list, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all remaining RCs be accepted and adopted. Of whatever's second. left. Yes. <laughs> Motion and second. Under discussion. There be a none, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wongeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 628 and 629 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 630 by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commission, recommending filing documents submitting the report by the Town of Wilson regarding a proposed joint community dog park on the former Town of Wilson landfill and recommending a favorable decision from the committee. Uh, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. 
Second. Motion second to uh, accept and place on file, 6.30. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 6.31. Eyes over. To be referred, 6.32 through 6.48 will be referred. Please note on 6.37 uh, that a document will go to Public Works also, not just Public Protection and Safety. It will go to Public Works also. Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, item 635, the Committee of the Whole already has had referred to it uh, another citizen input on banning cell phones. So if we want to send 635 to the Committee of the Whole, we can tackle both of them at the same okay. time. Okay. 635, sir. PP and S, and Committee of the Whole. Please make that notation. Thank you, Alderman Bout. Resolutions introduced three by Alderman Bourne, authorizing the City Attorney to engage. This, the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the law and licensing committee and the common counsel in various quasi-judicial hearings. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I ask for suspension of the rules on this one. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? He, he, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just uh, the reason why we have to hire outside counsel uh, on these matters with law and licensing is that Deputy City Attorney uh, Charles Adams asks, acts as the prosecutor in these cases. So the committee has to have outside counsel uh, representing the committee uh, and the interests of the citizens in these quasi-judicial quasi hearings. And we have at least one coming up next Tuesday that I'm aware of, and we may be having more coming up in the future. We've also had to consult with Attorney Volkner on a couple of preceding cases. So in order so that to uh, uh, expedite him getting paid for his uh, outside legal counsels. That's the reason I'm asking for a suspension. I need a motion, though. Uh, motion, uh, I think I already made the motion to put no. the resolution okay. upon its passage. Okay. And there, second? Second. second. Motion is second to put 649 upon its passage. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 650 by Alderman Meyer informing the Wisconsin DNR that the attached compliance maintenance annual report has been reviewed. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. If there are no objections, I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules and put the resolution upon its passage. Hold on. Hold on. Is there any objection to suspending the rules? Alderman Meyer will explain. There is no objection. Now you made a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Explain our suspension part of it. This is a time issue. Um, this report needs to be filed with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources by June 30th. Okay. Thank you very much. Was there a second to that a motion to put it? Second? Any further discussion? Alderman Renfleisch. No discussion. Just a clarification on reasons. Her, Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clionis? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 652 through 655 lies over. 656 and 57 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 658 by law and licensing. Recommending denying Class A intoxicating liquor license number 2555 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee and the applicant's failure to provide a business plan or demonstrate knowledge of alcohol laws and policies. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is uh, Mr. Lee here tonight from Liquor's Best. He's not here, Your Honor. Very well. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Lee appeared before our committee once, however, did not uh, appear at the last committee, and he was instructed to appear at the last committee with a business plan and a definite location for his business. He failed to do so, so we uh, voted uh, to deny the uh, Class A intoxicating liquor license. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President Bourne. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. 
Yesha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 659 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 660 by law and licensing, recommending granting the renewal of the Class B liquor license number 2272 held by PJ's Party Zone Incorporated subject to the provisions of the attached stipulation. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion on this one, uh, Your Honor, uh, we decided to go ahead and uh, grant this license. However, uh, Mr. Group from PJ's Party Zone has agreed to a stipulation uh, that his uh, license will be suspended for 60, 60 consecutive business days uh, somewhere between June 10th of 2008 and June 11th, uh, or, I'm sorry, August 11th of 2008. Uh, so uh, that's, that's why we granted the license, but he also is uh, subject to the, to the stipulations of the agreement. Very well, thank you. Any further discussion on 660? There is none. Please call the roll. Rinflash? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 661 by law and licensing recommending the renewal of the Class B fermented malt beverage license and Class C wine license number 2429, held by Yolas Cantina, uh, incorporated, subject to the provisions of the attached stipulation. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, again, uh, uh, Ms. Torres appeared at our last meeting. It was scheduled for a quasi-judicial hearing. However, it was stipulated with her attorney that uh, she was, she's going to surrender her license for 30 consecutive business days between June 10th, uh, 2008 and July 10th, 2008. Thank you, Mr. President Board. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Falk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis, Meyer, Montemayor, Aye. and Rinfleisch. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 662 by the Committee of the Whole, recommending the Council support resolution number 390809, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a letter of understanding with the bargaining units for voluntary participation in the Virgin Health Miles program, which will be acted on later in this agenda under matters laid over. Okay. <laughs> It just sounds a little funny. Uh, uh, Alderman Bauck, if you would do uh, 662 and 540. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move that the uh, RC be accepted and adopted and the attached resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll on 662 and 540. Okay, hold on just a second. Vanderweel. For Hasselt, Wangeman, Boren, Bauk, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, and Ryan. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 663 by law and licensing, recommending granting Class B liquor license number 2521 for milk and a warning and notice that the renewal is being granted subject to any action that may be taken as a result of the upcoming quasi-judicial hearing. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion, the uh, gentleman from uh, Milk uh, appeared at our last committee meeting and has agreed to do a voluntary surrender of his license, I believe, 10 days. Uh, originally it was seven, but now it's 10 because he didn't meet the 30-day limit. Uh, but uh, there's still a possibility of a quasi-judicial hearing on this one if he does not suspend, uh, if he does not uh, surrender his license. Thank you very much. Any further discussion on 663? 663. There is none. Please call the roll. For Hasselt? Aye. 
Longman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. And Vanderweel. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 664 by law and licensing, recommending, deny, recommending granting Class B liquor license number 2228 for Kev and Blondie's Blue Phoenix with a warning and notice that the renewal is being granted subject to any action that may be taken as a result of the upcoming quasi-judicial hearing. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, uh, this is the one earlier that uh, we're, we're going to need uh, outside counsel on. This is scheduled for a quasi-judicial hearing on uh, Tuesday night. Very well. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Longman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Verhassel. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. And we got one more for Vice President Boren. 665, by law and licensing, recommending, denying beverage operator's license number 7894 based on the applicant's failure to reveal all convictions, status as a repeat viola law violator, and record of violations related to the licensed activity. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion second. and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is uh, Joshua Crook here tonight. It's not here, Your Honor. Very well, thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Crook uh, appeared before our committee last Tuesday night, and uh, we were most concerned about his uh, record of violations rela uh, related to the license activity, and it was a unanimous decision by the committee not to grant the license. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson, Kleunis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, and Wangeman. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 666 has been dealt with. The Board of Committees 8, 667 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget for establishing appropriation for Chamber of Commerce membership dues. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your your Honor, I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, your Honor, it is uh, the uh, membership fees for the uh, Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, the money coming out of tourism. I'm not sure tourism is real pleased about it, but it's the right thing to do. <laughs> and it's appropriate. That's where it should come. Uh, the... Uh, I meant pleased that the money was coming out of their budget. Oh, that please. We okay. okay. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. Okay, 667, uh, authorizing the, the uh, transfer appropriation. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? No. Wangeman? And Boren. Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 668 by finance recommending authorizing waiving the competitive bidding process and enter into contract for police portable radios. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. And, put the, and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Any discussion? Uh, thank you. The, uh, these radios were approved through the capital improvement process. Uh, the funds come out of our capital improvement bonding. We just bonded for $3 million. The reason for waiving the competitive bidding process is because, uh, again, we have some state buying issues, and they're basically Motorola of a specific model that matches up with what we currently have. Very good. Thank you. Alderman Gisha, any further discussion? Vice President Warren. Thank you, Your Honor. It's my understanding from the uh, Finance Committee meeting that buying these radios for the uh, for the police department is going to make much life easy, much life much easier for the officers, which I'm totally in favor of, and it, I, I believe they're each going to have their own individual radio and charging system. 
which is going to be an upgrade over the system that they're using now. So I think it's a very good idea that we go ahead with this. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. And Balk? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 669 has been dealt with. 670 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget for establishing appropriation for temporary code enforcement um, individual. Alamagisha. Thank you, Your Honor. It was a busy finance meeting last Monday. <laughs> I move that the report of committee be accepted, adopted, and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Falk? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 671 through 673 lies over. Uh, 540 and 542 have been dealt with. Other matters authorized by law. 674 will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Alderman Bauck. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wonder if the distinguished chairman of the Finance Committee would like this document to come before his august body. Probably not. Which one particularly? <laughs> the, uh, from the Sheboygan Taxpayer Alliance, that document. You want it? And fine. Pardon me? And the Committee of the Whole also. Finance is fine. Just finance? Finance. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's come, yeah, it's okay. before us. Okay. Page 12, other matters authorized by law, 674, will go to Committee of the Whole and Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. Make that notation. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. Excuse me, hold on. Alderman Rehassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Could I just ask that my vote on 667 be changed to an aye? That was just an incorrect vote on my part. We Which need one? a, what, six what? 667. That's the, uh, for the uh, chamber. I, I need you to make a, a motion to reconsider. Mm -hmm. Do we want to do it? you want to handle it with a motion to reconsider? Sure. You need a motion to reconsider, which can be done in the same meeting. I'll make a, make a motion to reconsider. And Six, 667. Second. second. Motion and second to reconsider 667. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And the motion is now make a motion to uh, accept and adopt 667. I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt document 667. Okay. okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? We don't need to call a roll on this one, then. Yeah, I think you better. You better. Yeah. Okay, please call a roll. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Vanderweel? For Hassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law? Attorney McLean? 675 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will be referred to law and licensing committee? 676 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an access agreement with Wisconsin Public Service Corporation. That will go to City Plan Commission. 677 is a resolution amending the debt policy for the city's limit on the annual debt issuance up to $5 million per year for non-TIF projects. That will go to Finance Committee. I need a motion to adjourn. So second. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Your Honor. Oh, 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 <laughs> just like no, I just like to thank everybody tonight. This was a uh, this was a tough night, and we did it right, and we can be very proud of what we did tonight. There are a lot of countries in the world where they don't get to do this, so nice job. Stand adjourned. I love you guys. <laughs>